Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Is it still a proper party if XRP remains at 50 cents? Now guys, this is coming from the XRP community. We know Ripple is throwing a party on September the 29th, but I've been getting the sense that uh, some people in the XRP community are feeling a bit mixed surrounding this. Digital Assets Daily posted this poll, and he's already got over uh, 2,200 voters with three hours left. So is it still a proper party? I mean, I don't really know. But a lot of you guys are saying no, apparently. 53.9% uh, are, are not, I guess, thinking that we should be celebrating. Uh, Moon Lambo down here saying, are the no voters pouting? No, it's not a proper party because I want my Lambo now. It just seems like such an emotional response. Is the current price an indication it will never be higher? Why can't our community just celebrate a huge win regardless of price. So then what happened? Moon Lambo decided to post his own poll. Ripple is hosting a party for the XRP community on September the 29th, 2023 in New York City to properly celebrate XRP legal clarity. Is it a good idea for them to host such a party in light of the fact that XRP is about 50 cents today? Now he's got uh, about 1600 votes here with eight hours left. He did post it uh, obviously after and he just gives the options yes or no. 38.6% though uh, on his poll said no, whereas 61.4% says yes. So we're a bit divided in the XRP community. Pompous Maxi down here saying, wow, I'm surprised at the number of no votes. Do these people celebrate birthdays when XRP is down? Moon Lambo saying no. Micah saying it's their party and can host it whenever they want, but the XRP community will have the real parties when XRP hits above $10. Jenna X saying, you know, forget about short-term price action. This is a huge morale booster uh, and celebration. If you don't like it, don't attend. Frecky uh, H bar down here saying, yes, nothing wrong with setting crypto precedent and being excited about that. Bitcoin maxis and clown attorneys from the SEC can cry all they want, won't change the fact that XRP itself is not a security. So uh, I don't know, guys, how many of you are still planning on attending? I know uh, we recently did have the uh, XRP Vegas event a couple of months ago, and I am wondering, I mean, I'm still trying to make my schedule work to go to this thing. Uh, don't know if I'm going to be attending, but put it down in the comments, please, if you guys are planning on attending the September 29th party, or you can tag me over there on Twitter, working money CH. We have seen price rebound a little bit here, guys. Bitcoin is now trading at about $26,000 per coin. So it is up a little bit from yesterday at 25,700. So we are, like I said, seeing a bit of a rebound here. Let me throw it on the hourly and uh, you guys can see trying to slowly grind our way up on low volume though. So uh, still kind of precarious uh, when it comes to this uptrend. XRP2 up a little bit at 53, so 0 0.503. And it is moving the same way also on very, very low volume here. Uh, let me throw XRP back on the daily. So the other positive thing, guys, is that we are staying above this line, this trend line here that I drew for the XRP chart. Let me just get rid of everything there just to clear that up for you guys and uh, start from scratch there. The trend line still staying above that. So building support on top of that, albeit with very low volume here, guys, the market cap for the entire crypto space still holding strong at just over $1 trillion. Uh, we've got 24 hour volume, 18.88 billion. So that's down a little bit. Bitcoin dominance too at 48.4%. So not really seeing uh, too much in the way of altcoins moving away from Bitcoin in any particular direction. Fear and greed guys back in the 30s, 35. So people are still not feeling that confidence. And that could be part of the reason why we're seeing, you know, the XRP community not terribly excited. Uh, market, like I said earlier, hasn't really moved too much. Digital asset buy, bringing up this other point that has been circulating in and amongst the XRP community uh, between two different sides, two different camps. Some would think these were things said by influencers to hype XRP. So there's been some more criticism uh, of some influencers in the XRP community, either posting old material or, uh, you know, not giving anything context. Well, he's saying this, okay, these were actually things said by Ripple and this is why he's here. I believe in them and he's in it to win, guys. Same with me, XRP could help in a systematic risk situation in another financial crisis, something that we've uh, talked about on this channel too. XRP will be a supranational currency similar to the Swiss franc. XRP's simple goal to be the world reserve digital currency. We heard Brad Garlinghouse say that once in uh, in South Korea. Creator's goal was for XRP to be a world reserve currency, or maybe it was that that uh, Brad Garlinghouse mentioned in Korea in 2018. Uh, Ripple XRP goal to have liquidity of a G10 currency. Ripple is in fact replacing SWIFT. Uh, and then also joked about the IMF using a digital currency. So these are all, in fact, things that Ripple has said. Of course, they are continuing to build and they are just one entity that are building. Guys, did you know you can see all the XRPL validators and how they are voting on amendments at XRPScan.com? 
So check this out. You can also see the amendments currently under vote there. It's a fantastic utility, just a screen grab from that uh, website, but I have the website up here for you guys. And I will link all this in the description for you. Just take a look at some of these validators. You guys can see even here too, uh, that BitTrue is running a validator along with, uh, for example, the University of Waterloo in Canada, uh, Berkeley University, uh, just to name a couple, let's just take a look up here. Arrington XRP Capital also running an XRP validator there. So you can see how these guys are voting on amendments and how the XRP ecosystem is comprised of way more entities than just Ripple. So thought I'd bring that to your attention. The financial system is changing and guys, how we're making payments is going to change too. If you live in Colorado and you're looking to spend your crypto, well, you can do it almost. This one from Michael Branch here on Twitter. Colorado enables crypto payments via PayPal for driver's license and vehicle registration renewals. I don't know if uh, anybody watching is from Colorado. Uh, have you guys heard about this? Colorado residents can now renew their driver's license and vehicle registrations using cryptocurrency. The state's Department of Motor Vehicle, uh, Motor Vehicles or the DMV now accepts crypto through PayPal for online payments according to a new press release. The DMV says it will charge a service fee of $1 plus 1.83% of the total transaction cost for paying with digital assets. So it looks as though you will be paying a bit of a premium there. Nevertheless, it is uh, another option there for Colorado residents specifically to pay with cryptocurrency through PayPal. And guys, I have a feeling that a lot of states are going to follow suit. Once we do emerge into this new world of uh, tokenizing everything, more people are going to be holding cryptocurrencies for that exact reason. And so, you know, once, you know, the government and, uh, well, I mean, just people, society as a whole, as a general, uh, sees cryptocurrency as having value, more people are going to be using them and more people are going to be comfortable transacting in cryptocurrencies. So, you know, this is the first push here. We got to remember we are very, very early on still. Cypress Demand Core here bringing this up. They aren't hiding the simple fact that they are building the new financial infrastructure behind the scenes. We are entering into a phase where this technology should just fade into the background. And guys, that's what I'm saying. Eventually it will. Cryptocurrency will become so ubiquitous that there will be a point in time where we will eventually forget that we're even using crypto. That sounds crazy today, I know, but it will eventually just fade into the background. Actually make sure that we know how to run this technology securely within enterprises. How do we get all of our compliance, risk, and cybersecurity teams on board and comfortable with this technology? Now, many years later, a number of traditional financial institutions have done that work, have done a lot of experimentations and proof of concepts, and have a deeper understanding of this technology than they have before. And that's why, for example, as Jason mentioned, we're sort of entering this phase where, you know, in reality, the technology should fade into the background. Like, I don't think anyone ever leads with like, I'm building a business that's like based on AWS or like, I'm building an email based business, like congratulations. Like I, at some point it enables the business and it's efficient and it makes us, um, it, it enables us the ability to do more with more people around the world faster. Um, and similarly, uh, a digital assets infrastructure and blockchain will enable that in the context of value transfer and transactioning. So there you have it, guys. Eventually, we will take the technology for granted. Right now, I mean, we're still in the teething pains, but uh, eventually we will get to that point. So I wanted to thank Cypress Demand and Core there just for posting that. More Ripple Partner news. This has to do with Japan's largest bank, MUFG. One of the Ripple partnered consortium banks there in Japan, this one coming from Bondcrypt on Twitter, Japan's financial giant handling $3.1 trillion embraces Ripple's XRP and the crypto revolution. So some recent news here with regards to MUFG, they are Japan's banking behemoth, uh, and they've made a significant pivot back to the realm of cryptocurrency. The bank recently announced its strategic partnership with fintech group Jinko, laying the groundwork for an enterprise-grade wallet solution specifically designed for MUFG's crypto asset trust services. Uh, it's a notable development, particularly because the bank had previously put a halt on its crypto services due to government enforcement bans. Well, now we're seeing uh, MUFG plunge back into the realm of cryptocurrencies. Uh, I'm guessing Japan has maybe uh, made more clear their vision for what crypto is going to be in that particular country. Uh, this change was in response to a growing trend of institutional crypto adoption in global markets, a wave Japan is keen not to miss. So MUFG is no stranger to blockchain. As we know, as I just recently said, they are part of a consortium that uh, committed to using RippleNet back uh, several years ago now. And now they're jumping back into the crypto realm with regards to what it looks like uh, crypto custody. Yeah, crypto custody service, asset trust services. So this is enterprise grade as well, guys. So this is going to be for big institutions moving into crypto in the country of Japan. 
It also mentions in this article that they have a multi-dimensional strategy here uh, to further explore the strategic depths of crypto adoption. MUFG is initiating a crypto study group that brings together a consortium of nine diversified companies. Uh, among them are Jinko, Shinsei uh, Corporate Investment, a subsidiary of SBI, which is connected to Ripple, uh, Fran uh, fi Financy, uh, a firm specializing in sports fan tokens and reminiscent of Europe's uh, Shillis slash Socios, this collaboration aims to scrutinize token allocations and vesting schedules suitable for institutional level trusts. So there you have it, guys. More news, uh, great news there coming out of Japan. Wanted to thank Bondcrypt for posting that. Another one too here from Bondcrypt on Twitter. RippleX is set to introduce a novel clawback feature on the XRP ledger. So this is coming at a time when uh, more amendments are being suggested for the XRPL. Uh, in this case, it is the XLS39 amendment in a development that could recalibrate asset safety and control standards. RippleX, Ripple's engineering subsidiary is introducing the clawback feature on the XRP ledger. This novel amendment seeks to empower asset issuers with remarkable levels of command over their digital holdings. So clawback targets asset issuers by unveiling a unique identifier known as this. It is a piece of code flag. Uh, when activated, the cryptographic signature grants issuers uh, the extraordinary capacity to amend a trust line, the decentralized cryptographic link between asset issuer and holder. By doing so, issuers can reclaim assets under a wide array of scenarios, effectively modulating the security parameters of individual accounts. David Schwartz also uh, recently did talk a, a little bit about the clawback feature over there on Twitter, but here's essentially how it fortifies the XRPL ecosystem. This ingenious architecture of clawback extends beyond mere asset control. It acts as a versatile safety net. This mechanism capacitates issuers to initiate a specialized form of transaction, effectively clawing back tokens even from accounts that currently render them spendable. Such an architectural sophistication would be invaluable in cases like token holders losing access to their accounts or combat fraudulent activity and I think uh, you know for the majority of it it is for uh, combating fraud you know there uh, is always more developments on the XRPL that is working towards making that ecosystem more robust and uh, you know again like I said earlier on we can check out who is voting on what amendment here if that is the kind of thing you guys are interested in the tech side of the XRP ledger so again wanted to thank Bondcrypt just for letting us in on that now there is going to be a party a few people have confirmed already XRP Crypto Wolf saying he is confirmed. Uh, also, Ray Fuentes here, the RSVP window for Ripple's proper party is now closed. So uh, not to worry if you guys did not RSVP already, because they are going to be reopening it on uh, September the 8th, apparently. Additional tickets will become available on September the 8th. So looks as though people have been RSVPing. Uh, to my link to family, he says, raise your hand if you want to get together for a proper pre-party. So despite some of these no voters here, uh, looks as though uh, people in the XRP community are in fact interested in participating and in celebrating the win. Uh, Chip here from On The Chain said, I anticipate that many at the main party may not be familiar with Ripple or XRP. One person mentions they're going to NYC and informs a friend residing there. That friend then registers and shares the news with two other friends who also register. However, the true devotees... Those who truly deserve of such a gathering might be unable to attend due to family, work, and other obligations. It's disheartening to see so many who want to come but cannot. I hope everyone who goes has a wonderful experience. It's a great chance to meet those we've connected with over the years on Twitter, etc. Have a great time, Ray. Appreciate all you do for this community. Uh, and so, you know, it, it might be that, uh, you know, a lot of people will not be able to attend. I guess, uh, you know, geography certainly does play uh, a huge role in this. Mr. Use case here really doesn't get it. XRP is under the price of my first buy in 2018 at 50 cents. Why are people so excited to go to this XRP party? So another perspective here, Darren Moore responding here. I miss Long Island. It's an excuse to visit and at the same time meet some of the people I chat with online. Mr. Use case does respond here. I get your situation since NYC is kind of home to you. Being Sundrage here uh, saying you should go. I'm going to try to make it. Price doesn't matter when it comes to that crypto pussy down here saying it's not an XRP party. It's a Ripple party because they won a long court case. Ripple is throwing the party, not the influencers. Nobody has to go. So some here are maybe even accusing influencers of having something to do with this. I don't know why. Mr. Use case responding, Ripple didn't win anything in court yet. Bibliop responding, well, I wouldn't go to celebrate gains, but meeting people is a lot of fun. And wouldn't it be nice to ask influencers questions that trigger sweaty armpits in person? 
Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Good point, says Mr. Yusuke. So, you know, uh, people do have their reasons to go. Stephanie Starr here also bringing this up because it's the first digital asset with clarity. And guys, that's what we have to remember. Ripple has fought in court to get XRP clarity, and we've done it, guys. It's not a security, she says. You know the whole reason for the two and a half year lawsuit with the SEC. It's about celebrating the technology, not the price. So very good point there. However, there are other people that think there might be something else a brewing, possible an IPO announcement, says XRP Snot Rocket here. Exactly right, says Micah XRP. So that was the other thing that I wanted to address. Speculation is rife in the XRP community with the court's stance that XRP is not a security and the SEC's own admission. Why hasn't there been a settlement? Brad Garlinghouse hinted at a proper victory party on September 29th in NYC, recall the previous promise to the XRP community after a win against the SEC. Ripple's official tweet adds fuel to the fire with a community celebration announcement and that image for September 29th in New York City. Could it be the moment we've all been waiting for if the case concludes in Ripple's favor? The path for XRP to become the world reserve currency is clear and nothing can stand in its way. So, I mean, I guess they do have to plan this party accordingly. Are they planning... In fact, to mention that there is a settlement coming down the pike, guys. John Deaton here responding to that, though. He's saying, I have zero insider information. With that said, let me tell you that at the Ripple proper party, there won't be an announcement of a settlement. See why I say that below. There won't be an announcement of an IPO either. Who approves an IPO? That's right, the SEC. The SEC isn't going to approve an IPO when they're seeking a permanent injunction against Ripple related to future institutional sales of XRP during the remedies phase of the litigation, as well as seeking a permanent injunction against the SEC and chairman of the board if they win at trial. What John Deaton is referring to is his earlier tweet here, which stated the only way Ripple and the SEC settle before the end of the year is if Judge Fela grants the Coinbase MTD, or partially grants it, finding token sales on the exchange in a blind bid-ask transaction uh, to not fall under U.S. securities laws, but allows the staking component to move forward. If that happens, then the SEC and Gary Gensler may be forced to pivot. I doubt the Solicitor General, though, would allow an appeal in that scenario, one that could reach the Supreme Court, allowing for the High Court to further strip away not only the SEC's power, but all other federal agencies as well. So there's still a lot brewing, guys, behind the scenes. John Deaton saying he's fairly confident that this does not mean that there's going to be an announcement of a settlement, nor an IPO, and Bill Morgan here even confirming that. Agree 100%. I was once a believer that there could be a settlement, but the SEC wants a death struggle with all of crypto except Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum. It won't settle with Ripple or Coinbase. It is a sick agency. I could not agree more, Bill. Thank you to Bill Morgan and John Deaton just for posting that. So guys, even if there isn't a special announcement, are you still planning on going to the party? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.